Hello and good morning, and welcome to worship. We are so glad that you're here today. If you're a guest, we have a bright yellow card for you to fill out and put into our offering, offering plate, or you can go down to the preschool area where the big blue screen is, and we have a special gift for you. Let's pray and continue to worship. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day that you have given us. We are just thankful, Lord, that we can worship you. And we ask, God, that you just bless the service and be with the choir and all involved within it as we praise and lift up your name. We pray this in your name. Amen. Good morning. I'll be reading a scripture from Zephaniah chapter 3, 14 through 20. Sing, daughter Zion, shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and, and rejoice with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear, fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, do not fear Zion. Do not let your hands go, hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke, rebuke you. He will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove you from all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach for you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land that they have suffered shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord.
Please join us in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, we're glad to be able to gather here with you today in your presence and um, to be able to worship together in the season of Advent and to be reminded that the Word became flesh and you sent your only Son down to die for our sins and to ransom us and pay the price that we could not pay on our own. In your Son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. 
Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. It's been 400 years since the prophet Isaiah spoke these words. The children of Israel long for God to send the Messiah. Out of fear and uncertainty, the Jewish leaders have become so obsessed with the ritual of the law that they are becoming blind to the reality of the Lord. As they are about shout from the temple in Jerusalem for deliverance, a tiny cry echoes from a lowly shelter in the historic city of David. Fear is about to be overcome by the birth of the promised one. Nothing in the ancient world can compare to the grandeur of the temple, with the possible exception of a manger and a stable in the little village of Bethlehem. A virgin gives birth to a son, Emmanuel has come. Do not be afraid. God has come to earth. Do not be afraid. He appears to virgin birth. Through the angels as they sing. Behold the Holy One. Do not be afraid. Emmanuel has come. Do not be afraid. is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? and my salvation. He is my comfort and my strength in every situation. Whom shall I fear? Say it with me. Whom shall I fear? Say it again. Whom shall I fear? Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Thank you. 
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Signals. shone round them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Angels, we have heard and sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in the to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child.
holds throughout the heavens. They're shown. heard it, wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard. Prophecies are being fulfilled. Eternal promises are coming to life. God is presenting his son to the world. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and we have come to worship him. from the east travel through the night searching for a child he led by heaven's light they have seen the sign scripted in the sky telling of the
wise men offered their precious gifts and they worshiped. And so it has been for 2,000 years. People of wisdom still seek him, still experience that exceeding great joy, still bring him their offerings. Do not be afraid. celebration of the birth of Christ has taken on many traditions since that evening in Bethlehem. Ritual has once again threatened to overshadow reality. The excitement as Christmas approaches is sometimes equal to the letdown as the season passes. Christmas is not about all the things that we bring to the celebration. Christmas is about what he brings. Christmas is about a God in heaven who loved us enough to send his son to die for us. Christmas is about deliverance from fear. Christmas is about returning to the heart of worship. Christmas is about offering my heart. Christmas is about Jesus. When music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's a word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, when it's all about I'm coming back to the 
you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I live for you, my Lord, every breath that I take. As we celebrate this third Sunday of Advent, we've been working through moving toward the day that we celebrate, the day that we remember Jesus' birth. And I've shared with you over the last couple of weeks that as we think about the fact that we will celebrate the remembrance of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago, we also need to remember that Jesus promised to return. And so Advent is not only about his birth 2,000 years ago, but it's a reminder. Each and every year, it's a reminder that he is going to come back. 
And we need to be ready. Now, one of the things that I've shared with you, and we've been doing this a little differently than we have done uh, in years past, but over the last uh, two weeks and now through the remainder of our Advent season, we will actually be looking at scriptural texts that come from generations of, of believers who have set these texts aside, these scriptures aside, to tie to specific dates. And so today we will look at two of these quickly. The first is Zephaniah chapter 3. You've already heard it read today, and I will read it in just a moment. But one of the things I want you to listen to through this passage is the fact that it reminds us that we should not fear. The title of our music presentation today is Do Not Fear. And I don't believe it was by accident that this music was selected months ago, long before we realized that this text would be what we would look at today. And so, as I said, you've heard this read. I want to read it again. Listen to these words of the prophet Zephaniah, who prophesied many years before Jesus' birth, beginning in verse 14. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again, let me repeat that, never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion, do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The sorrows of the appointed feasts will remove, will, I will remove from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame and gather those who have been scattered. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they were put to shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. There's a couple things that I want you to hear in this passage. What a beautiful, beautiful passage. We are told that we should be glad, that we should rejoice, that we should praise God, shouting His glory, singing His edification out of pure gratitude. Why? Because He rescued us from our sin. He removed, it says, our punishment. The price that we should have to pay for our sin through Jesus, He removed that punishment. He removed that that debt that we couldn't pay. And so we're to remember that. And even in the midst of struggles, even in the midst of all the difficulties that we may face, and some of us in this room today face difficulties. In fact, if you're breathing, everybody take a breath. If you're breathing, you face difficulties. If, you don't, if you're not breathing, let somebody know. Raise your hand right now. <laughs> Life is full of difficulties. But listen to the last phrase. Listen to the last phrase of verse 15. Do not let your hands go limp. 16, excuse me. Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. Now what that is a picture of is someone who has given up. Have you seen that expression before? You get all excited about something and you get there and it's not going to happen and you just, hmm. right? It's like going to the Keurig and, and, and you get there and you realize it's broken. Isn't that awful? Yeah, especially for those that need coffee in the morning. It's that idea that we are dejected, that we, are, we give up. 
And Zephaniah says, O daughter of Zion, do not fear. Do not let your hands hang limp. Why? Because God is with us. God is with us. God is for us. He loves us. In verse 15, it says, the Lord, the King is with you. In verse 17, it says, the Lord, your God is with you. He is mighty to save. In our words today, that would say, the Lord is with you. He's got this. <laughs> he is big enough. And so we rejoice. So we glorify him because he is with us. The creator of the world is with you. He takes delight in you. He is with you. I don't know that I've read this phrase before preparing for our time together this morning, but I want you to listen and have the picture the end of verse 17, he will rejoice over you with singing. Think about that for a moment. Let that rest on your soul for a moment. The God of creation, the one that has everything in his hand, the one who has every right to reject us and say, you are not worthy. That God sings over you. What a picture. I have a picture when, when our children were small and we would rock them to bed and some of them went down easier than others. It's interesting how three kids can be so different. But inevitably, I would lay that child down in that bed and I would sing over them occasionally. And that's the picture I have of God. In the midst of all that he's going, got going on, all the sticky notes on his desk that remind him of all the things he needs to do, in the midst of that, he takes time to rejoice over you and sing over you. Why in the world would we ever fear when the God of all creation knows you, loves you, sings over you? And then the third thing I would point out and it sounds very familiar to what we've been enduring over the last two years. Zephaniah wrote to the children of Israel who were being gathered back from being scattered all over the Middle East. But he says that he regathers. And he talks about the sorrows for the appointed feasts. He says, I'll remove those from you. Think about that for just a moment. When, when COVID hit in March, we had to stop meeting. And one of the things that I grieved immediately was in just a few weeks, we're going to have what? Easter. How do we not come together and celebrate the Super Bowl of Christianity? How do we not come together at Easter and celebrate an empty tomb? I was grieving that. All of these children of Israel that had been scattered, all of those festivals, all of those things that meant so much to them, they couldn't do. And Zephaniah speaks God's words and he says, the sorrows from those appointed feasts that you couldn't celebrate, I'm going to remove that from you. They've become a burden for you. And instead, I'm going to regather you. I'm going to regather you. I will give them praise and honor in every land. And at that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. That's the God we serve. He brings us home. He makes a way. He takes our punishment away. He sings over us because He loves us and He's with us. Our response, our response should be submission and gratitude and praise for what He has done for us. We're not going to have an invitation as we normally do, but I do want us to have a time of response. And so in just a moment, I'm going to read another passage that comes from this date. It comes for the third Sunday of Advent. But as I do, I just want you to hear it and receive it. So I'm going to ask you now to just bow your heads, close your eyes, and do your best, as hard as it may be, to clear your minds. And as you do, listen and receive these words from the Apostle Paul in Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything.
but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. From First Chronicles, words that apply to us not having fear, but being bold and courageous. It says, be strong and courageous and do the work. Don't be frightened by the size of the task, for God, the Lord, is with you. He will not forsake you. He will see to it that everything is finished correctly. Do not be afraid. God has come to earth. Aren't you thankful for the gift of God's Son? And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Fear not, Fear not for behold, good tidings we bring. Seize the 
say a huge thank you to Johnny, to the choir, to Lloyd, Luann, Mac, the, and I left out all of the workers that work with our children on uh, Wednesday evening for them to be ready for uh, our, our program today. Uh, give them another round of applause. They deserve it. And they let me stand there and mouth the words, too. That was even more gracious. I even was pretty much on time this time, unlike the first time. We are so glad that you are here today. And I hope and I pray that this helps you as you move toward the Advent day. When you move toward Christmas Day and you think about what Jesus has done. One, a couple of things that I want you to be aware of that are coming up as we move again closer to Christmas Day. There's just a few things left on our calendar, but they're important. Wednesday night, we will have our tamalada. I didn't grow up in South Texas. I knew what, knew what a tamale was before I came here, but I'd never heard of a celebration built around tamales. But we will do that. So if you enjoy tamales, this is your week. Wednesday night, 5 o'clock, we'll have our meal downstairs. 
We'll, after everyone has eaten, we will head across to Koinonia and Carol there. That is a wonderful time and a blessed time. Uh, if you happen to teach at Menger Elementary, we will be feeding you tamales <laughs> on Wednesday morning. If you teach in our school here, you will get tamales on Friday. And in between, our Deja Vu crew will be having their Senior Adult Fellowship on Thursday, where they are also having, you guessed it, tamales. tamales. So like I said, if you like tamales, this is your week. It's going to be a great time of fellowship, and so I just encourage you to do that. Uh, again, Thursday is the, the senior adult tam tamalada. That will start at 11. Serving will happen about 11.30, and so I just wanted you to be aware of that. And then the only other thing I would mention to you is Christmas Eve. We will celebrate Christmas Eve this year on the 24th. We do that usually because that is <laughs> Christmas Eve. So that's when we're going to do it. At 6 o'clock on Christmas Eve, we will gather here, and we will have communion, music, we will have a candlelight uh, ending to that service as we normally do. It's just a wonderful time. I would encourage you to come a little early. Sometimes the room fills pretty quickly, uh, but we want to encourage you to do that and make, again, Christmas a part, or what really me the meaning of Christmas is, make it a part of your celebration. So as we are dismissed today, may the God who loves us, who is with us, who sings over us, remind us that there is nothing, nothing to fear. Amen. We're dismissed. <laughs>